for those three guys to be working in cahoots, that's a very, very powerful trio there. Why aren't you at the Fox News debate tonight in Milwaukee? I've taken a pass, as it's, you probably noticed. Oh, I, I <laughs> Elon's probably sick of the current leadership and all of that. Yes. Oh. My last video, I put flat out in this tire. I did not seat it correctly. I thought I did, but I didn't. Uh, it is still off, as you can see by this footage. Uh, it didn't set right. Since I wanted to do a ride video and that ain't happening, I'm gonna bring you a Zedit. Rob Sultan's most recent live stream where he was talking about Trump's mugshot, Elon Musk, and then Tucker Carlson. So let's just get to it. 1.5 million. 1.5 million likes on that thing 220 million views on him putting his own mug shot out there for the, his last tweet was on january 8th 2021 and he drops that i mean people cannot like him fine yeah he's arrogant he that's president. okay i know you're not thinking you never do I'm sorry? No, go ahead. But that is some savage stuff right there. I liked it. Look, I put a like on there. I just, and then he put his his you can click on that and that brings you to donate to him. And then you know he like dressed up for that. You know he practiced. You know he did. You know that he went in front of the mirror a few times and he's like, "You know what? This is going to be the most seen photo ever." And he's just like, "Should I be like that?" No, no, should I? Like that. Red tie, blue tie. No, definitely red tie, blue suit. Red tie, white shirt, real presidential. Yep, that'll do. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. It was just <laughs> the most savage move. He had to talk with Elon about that. That's why I think there's some sort of cahoots going on behind the scenes. I think that they're talking with each other because he had to talk to Elon and say, look, is it okay if I do this? I'm going to post this because I haven't been on here in two years, three years. And I know you gave me my account back. And by the way, his account on there on X currently has 87 million followers, far more than the current leader. That's more than any presidential ticket has ever gotten in the history of the United States of America. Right. He's going to politicize it. He's going to use it. And all of those domestic terrorists uh, that he's leading will have a voice. And I'm very disturbed about it. That was a pretty bold move for Elon to let him back on. I mean, I would have done the same thing in his shoes, but it's like that was bold. But the thing is also, do you know how good that was for Elon? Elon's probably sick of the current leadership and all of that. Yes. Oh. But for him to do that, the amount of views and the amount of people that are talking about that post that he just did on Twitter. And at the same time, Tucker posts is posting only on Twitter now. And it's getting nearly like, what was it? 260 million views on that Tucker video that actually, that actually happened. I, of course it happened so I, elon musk is laughing to the bank right now with the amount of viewers going on to x and for tucker for elon for trump all of them together doing what they're doing it's pretty genius stuff whether you like them don't like them i tend to like them it's smart and it's and it's just like it just makes all the debate and everything that they were doing with the republican debate or whatever it just makes it look like a joke you know it's like yeah i'm gonna go sit down and do this interview that gets 300x the amount of viewers or 200x the amount of viewers why aren't you at the fox news debate tonight in milwaukee i've taken a pass as it's, you probably noticed oh, I, I did i'm grateful that you did it's just crazy that's ridiculous <laughs> elon's laughing at the bank with the amount of viewers going on to his own platform uh where he calls the shots there and, and i don't think people understand just how much power elon musk has could you imagine paying 40 something billion dollars for a name brand for twitter and then going mm, i'm gonna call it x <laughs> dude's a madman dude is a madman i think before he bought twitter he was only at like 50 million or 60 million so he's gone up like 100 million followers since buying the platform Elon Musk, the amount of power he has with that many viewers. And then here's the, the beauty in it. And I've talked about this in the past when, when the acquisition was going through and even before it was going through. In Elon's position, I would have argued because of how much of a celebrity he was and how much pull it brings for Tesla, if he had gotten kicked off of Twitter, I think the valuation of Tesla could have fallen 20, 40 billion if he got kicked off of it for, for having problems with the current board of, of Twitter back in the day. So what he did is solidified his following. Now, 150 million plus people can't be taken away from him. That's why, like, that's why everybody's on social media to build their ecosystem, to, to build the group of people that follow them in a sense. And so it's like Elon now, he's solidified that. Nobody can take it away from him.
I mean, think about it. Elon Musk can literally say, I'm going to launch this product here. And it would sell out in half a second because 150 million people are looking for anything he wants to sell. It it just sells immediately. So the the power that Elon has is, is substantial. For those three guys to be working in cahoots, that's a very, very powerful trio there. I would argue probably in the top like 10 most powerful people on the planet to be in a, in a trio together. You know, Tucker is like one of the most viewed people, if not the most viewed people in from traditional media. Uh, that's now not that at all. Elon is Elon. And then you got Trump. It's like, that's a, that's a very, very powerful mix right there. I know that that Tucker probably talked to Elon is like, look, are you, are you for real about free speech? Am I really allowed to post whatever I want? You tell me. And he's like, yes, you can. I know that conversation had to happen between the two of them. And then there had to be a conversation with Trump. So it's like, that's, that's an interesting situation there. I'm not sure if I'd want to turn into a cyborg or not. I'd, I, I'd want to be, but I will say this. The first person that successfully turns into a cyborg is going to be at a huge advantage. I would immediately be like, okay, I'm going to learn stock trading. Cyborg brain, go to trading view. Boom, boom, boom. Let's make a couple hundred million. Move on to the next thing. You know, whoever does get it first is probably going to be at a huge advantage. Her, Hurricane Hyde says Elon is very sketch. I think Elon, I'm I'm not 100% sure about him. I, it is very clear that he is a legitimate genius. That is very clear to me. Now, is he for good or bad? I think that he's genuinely like just having fun with it all. I think he genuinely believes he's in a simulation. He said it multiple times. I tend to agree with him that it's probably a simulation. And I think he's just having fun with it all. That's what I think. I think he's literally, if, if you were, uh, if you genuinely believed that you were in a simulation and you've been so wildly successful to be worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, what, in, what inspires you and what makes you excited about the future? I do the same stuff that he's doing. Oh, you want to kick me off Twitter or you want to silence me or whatever? I'm going to buy Twitter. Buy it. Done. <laughs> on that note, on that note, we've been live for a while now. It's, I've, I've seen a lot of the old faces on here. A lot of people that I haven't seen in here for a long time. And so been a while since i've done a live stream and i appreciate you all i appreciate you all being here uh just so you guys know exactly why i've been gone and i'm building a a multi-million dollar company i'm i'm trying to get myself in a position of escaping the rat race so that i can uh you know make a difference in some way shape or form before i leave this planet whoa this is heavy there is a need for people to to bring back the real american way and to, to bring back what it means to be uh, an American and what it means to, to see a, a peaceful country be the best country that it that it's supposed to be. It's sad because once you see once you see past the smoke and mirrors of it all, it's hard to have an upbeat attitude. It's hard to think, you know, that, it, oh, it's all going to get better when you see just how far the wealth divide is between the rich and the poor. And the, even the middle class, the middle class and the poor, that divide, it used to be like, you know, that far or something to the rich and the middle class. But now it's just getting ridiculous. And I just don't know what it's going to look like if it, that divide gets as far as it's supposed to be, that it's headed towards. I don't buy that whole Gary Vee thing of, oh, you got time. You got time. It's like, no, I don't. No, I don't. This world's getting crazy. And I, I think from my childhood, I lost my father when I was young and things. It's just like, I, I know that crazy things can happen and everything changes overnight. So it's like, I want to prepare for that. I believe in, you know, Murphy's Law. It's like, if it can happen, it will happen and prepare for it. So... I'm not that whole, that, that kind of soft mentality of, oh, you've got time. You're only 30. You can wait till you're 40 and you're still young. It's like, nah, I want to get after it now while I can, while I'm, I still got, uh, you know, my heart beating and I can still do something about it. And I think you should too watching this, you know, I think you should get after it and get yourself out of the rat race, hop off that hamster wheel and start looking at things from outside of the cage. I don't think people realize how powerful they really are. If they did, All of this could end overnight. All of this craziness going on could end overnight. 